Hey guys, I hope you're well. Welcome back to the Isle of Wight. Last week, we worked on these beautiful riverside houses and boy, do they look good. Really pleased with the outcome of those. Really happy of how the detailing went down. It was a bit of a struggle at times, but it really did pull off in the end. And today, we're gonna to be working on something extremely exciting. I did say we would finish off detailing the Fishbourne area, but we have something really exciting to put down today. It's a unique asset created specifically for this series, and I am so excited to show you. The item itself was created by the wonderful Mac Welshman, and here you see it now. We're placing it down, and you probably guessed already from the title of this episode, but this is the Osborne House. And as expected with all of Mac Welshman's work, this is another phenomenal building. The modeling is absolutely out of this world, and we'll get some really nice for cinematic shots later on in the episode so make sure you stick around for those to see the real beauty in action. So on screen you can see what we're trying to do here is the actual Osborne house itself does kind of present itself on a bit of a slanted grassed area. So Mac Welshman has created the build to replicate that perfectly and we're just using a mixture of terraforming tools and the terraforming networks to raise up the land values to get a tidy finish. Now if you are a resident or a frequent visitor of the, of the Isle of Wight, the Osborne House is one of those locations that you have to have seen at least once. And if you haven't already, this is one place that I would highly suggest you go and have a look and have a visit. Have a walk around, there's not too much to do in that sense, it's more of a visual um, look around. You can also go inside the buildings and see some really, really cool stuff inside it. And for a bit of background history, the Osborne House was or is a former royal residence over in East Cowes. The house was built between 1845 and 1851 for the Queen Victoria and Prince Albert as a summer house and rural retreat, which we all know is certainly what the Isle of Wight is consistent of. The model itself was styled as an Italian palazzo and you can certainly see that with the architecture and the look of the building. It's very unique, it's very pretty, it's very wholesome. It's just a very nice place to have and see and it's located perfectly in this area here. There's nothing busy going on around it. One side of the building you look over and you see the rest of the aisle. The other side you get to see the ocean. It's a beautiful spot and it's one that I was really excited to get to work on and I've been even more luckier that uh, Mac Welshman has kindly agreed to build the model for the actual um, actual location otherwise I'm not sure what I would have used but I would have still tried to create something special but this is absolutely amazing so as you can see from the model itself here there is a lot to detail there is a lot to place down on these concrete areas so I'm trying to replicate it as best I can using various pictures that I found on the internet but I'm gonna sort of wing it a little bit and add my own sort of flair to it because it's very similar to a lot of these sort of locations. Depending on the time of the year or certain events, the flower arrangements are all dependent upon something that's going on. So they're always gonna be different. Nothing's gonna be the same. Obviously the, the layout of certain planters, for example, that can't be moved will always be the same. Uh, but I'm just gonna try and replicate a look, a feel that really does present this beautiful, beautiful building. Now, whilst we place down these grass verges, just a quick update for you guys, I'm actually going to be visiting the Isle of Wight in under a month's time and I did put a poll out on the YouTube channel and also on my social media um, networks sort of suggesting whether I should do some sort of a vlog, blog, whatever you want to class it as. Um, I'm going there, I'm going to be going there for about five days. Um, I'm going to take a camera with me, I'm going to sort of take some um, some footage of certain locations that I'm going to be visiting for reference of this project, this series. Um, but I was wondering if it's worthwhile doing something in terms of a little video for you guys to see. Not sure if that would be of interest, let me know in the comments section below. Um, I mean I'll be going there and taking footage anyway, but if you want me to do a in real life sort of video blog when I get back with the footage I'll be more than happy to do so. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments section below and uh, obviously if anyone is on the island I'm gonna be around the sort of Shanklin area around there But obviously it's not exactly a long distance from one side of the island to the other So if anyone else happens to be around there, let me know um, But yeah, hit me up in the comments section below 
Oh, and also I've managed to get hold of a, um, a gimbal um, mount for my phone as well. So I'm really excited to try and try that out and see how that goes. If anyone's used one of those before or has any advice on doing so, um, be really cool to know. It's, um, I'm going to try and treat it very much like the way I do my cinematics. So I'm going to sort of trial it out and see what I can do with that. Um, obviously, you're going to get the, the steady arm movements with those as well. And I'm actually going to be traveling from the fish. Well, sorry, I'm going to be traveling to the Fishbourne port, which is the one we've already made. So I'm going to try my best to sort of connect somehow um, a camera to the car window and see if we can video footage the actual port and you guys can have a look and see if it looks anything like it, which would be pretty cool, I think. It's uh, really going to be really exciting actually to head over there. Um, and if I'm able to check out the Osborne house as well, um, with some footage that'd be really awesome to sort of put them side by side as well. Now flower arrangements I've always found a little bit tricky when playing City Skylines. It's obviously a lot easier now with the combination of a number of beautiful flowers and props in the workshop but also the fact of move it and all these extra mods that really do enhance the ability to move around flowers and make them look more realistic. So. I'm kind of trying out new techniques um, based on real life um, images of flower arrangements and I used to make things a little bit too, I guess, um, unrealistic in terms of the flowers and plants. And what I mean by that is I used to place plants down sort of in lines. Um, so they look pretty, but in reality, that's not really how things happen. Obviously there are flower arrangements, but even those are not perfect flowers aren't always the same in that respect so i try to do a few little unique patterns here with these flowers and combining some flowers with other types of flowers to see what works and what doesn't and i'm hoping um the outcome works quite nicely because uh the cinematics that i've already already done um which we'll see at the end of the video really did look good with the flower arrangements that i got down and you may also notice that the uh, the LUTs keeps changing <laughs> and uh, that's because I'm still in between two LUTs what to use for the series. Um, when I was working over by the coast things looked a lot better with one LUT and when I moved over to here this area building the house um, it seemed a little bit dull so I was trying a few things out so um, the LUT as I said we have there is two that I like and there's two that I'm probably only going to use but I need to decide on one and stick to it so excuse the uh, the time lapse here because um, you will see a number of different types of LUT. Now this section here I was really really happy with. So basically on the Osborne house there's this little bit of trellising um, which is basically just a, an open roof where you can grow plants up and along them. Um, and we've taken the ivy from the workshop and we've just placed it on top of this and sort of gave that look that the ivy has taken over this structure and that's what it looks like in real life and I was really really happy of how this turned out. This ivy is really really good stuff. If you want to use it and you want to try and make a you know an older settlement, an older building look more old I guess, um, definitely go ahead of the ivory. Ivy? Ivory? Ivy because um, it really does make a big difference to just putting up the walls. As you can see on this segment here, we put some up against the walls along with the hedge as well. And it just, it just gives it that little bit of a pop that you kind of want to have sometimes. And talking of these pops, you will probably not have noticed, well, you probably did and I didn't talk about it, but the, um, the grass we put down, I felt that it needed to have some sort of a border. Um, the, the grass on its own looked a bit incomplete, so we took the curbs and placed those around it as well, just to make it look a bit neater. Um, I think it gives a better appeal off. It kind of looks like it's got a border around it. Um, I didn't want to have them too high up. I just wanted to look look a bit more respectable, um, a lot more realistic that way. And especially as we're using those curbs on the side, we needed to have something that matched the rest. So I think that worked out quite nicely in the end. And you'll see here we're doing a bit more flower arrangements and whilst I do that I'm going to leave you with some music and I'll catch up with you shortly.
and we are back. So now we're moving on to the pathways and there's some really beautiful paths all around this site. It's a nice place to go and have a little walk around. So much to see and every sort of angle you go to when you look back on the actual house, everyone is different and everyone is absolutely beautiful. So certainly something to consider if you do want to um, visit this area that um, it's a really nice place just to have a little wander around and especially on a nice summer's day. But even on a rainy day, this building still looks absolutely beautiful. Now I'd like to leave this point and just ask you guys, where would you like to see being built next? So there's a lot of options. Obviously I've got a long list of what is exciting and fun to build first, but what do you guys want to see next? What would you enjoy seeing the most of? And yeah, what would you want to see me work on next? Let me know in the comments section below. Now the next episode of the Isle of Wight is probably going to be a couple of weeks away now um, and the reason for that is because I'm working heavily at the moment on a new Monaco episode, one of the episodes which a lot of you requested lately um, and it's really, really an exciting episode as well, I'm really getting into this one, um, really excited with the progress and can't wait to show you guys as well but keep that in mind that there will be obviously alternate videos between the two and I may have a week off in between some of those as well just to keep my creativity flair going and also I do spend a lot of time researching these areas so you know keep that in mind as well that an episode a week is not always possible for me especially with my work and in real life commitments as well uh, but I hope that when I do release these videos you do enjoy them and they are obviously you know geared towards the higher end of the, um, the video quality and design and detailing side of things rather than vanilla so obviously again that also takes a bit of time but I know a lot of you are fully aware of the situation but just to the new followers we've had a lot of those recently which is amazing so hello everyone who is new to this episode if you are new hit me up in the comment section let me know if you are new it's always good to hear from you and as I always ask if you are a resident of the Isle of Wight do pop up and say hello as well it's always nice to see who is on the island that I'm trying to replicate <laughs> it's always fun now not only did Mac Welshman release this beautiful building but along with it he's released a number of props as well so there's a um, a lot of the the slopes and pillars and there's a few walls and a few ornament vases as well so there's a lot of stuff as you can see on camera what I'm placing down there. there's a lot of stuff that comes with this building so even if you don't want to, the buildings to be put down but you really like the uh, the architecture and the, the way that some of these props are being used, you can get those as well by subscribing to the pack. You get everything in the pack itself. So keep that in mind. There's some really nice pieces here that you can use and combine in other parts of your project. You don't have to combine them with the Osborne House. Obviously they're designed for it but if you've got buildings or locations that look very similar to it, another advantage of subscribing to this beautiful asset as well so check out the link there'll be a link in the description for the uh, workshop link to Mac Welshman's Osborne House so please do check it out and please as well even if you're not going to subscribe but you're really you know you enjoy the look of this house you think it's well done such as I do please do also like and rate up the uh the asset because it's, you know it's our way of saying thank you to these creators and I can't do a hundred or a thousand likes myself if I could I would but I'd appreciate that if you guys can also do so that'd be extremely nice for the creator and also for me in a way to say thank you to Mac Welshman for doing this beautiful piece of work for us. Now back into the time lapse you'll see now we're also putting down some of the grass verges here so um, we're trying to replicate the shapes. The shapes up on this segment are completely, well, not completely, they're very outrageous compared to what we have to be able to be done. Um, I could have spent a lot of time using procedure objects to really get these shapes correct, but I thought I would just be creative and make my own up. So that's what we're doing here. They aren't anything like what you see um, in the real life thing, but um, I just wanted to make some unique shapes here and they you know they, they do a good job for us it works out nice um, and yeah it, it does what it needs to do we just wanted to get this area looking very nice and pretty and we we'll be placing down all the plants on here as well shortly and that's when things come to life this is purely just the backbone once the plants go down we you know we can really really 
get things going and make things look nice. And again, as always guys, it's not an episode without using procedure objects and there is the moment of procedure objects use, extending that circular um, planter to accommodate the fountain. So up here we was a little bit limited in terms of what plants we could use because technically this is a raised platform. Uh, you can't put plants down because they would fall through the ground. It's not a solid ground structure. You can see now and again the way that the camera zooms in, you can see the actual structure is nothing underneath it. Uh, there could have been ways around this. We could have raised the terrain up a little bit um, to allow that then to actually work. But that often causes issues and I didn't really want to mess around with the, uh, the terraforming. I got the building down perfectly well, I didn't want to mess around with it at that point. So we are using the prop based plants, flowers, trees etc. Which again as I say is limited to what and how many there are on the workshop. But luckily for us the type of flowers and the type of bushes that we wanted to use for this area are the ones that are props so it works out quite nicely for that and obviously I understand why there's not so many um, plants as props because this is quite a unique way of, uh, of playing the game and a unique way of placing down plants so we do, we do still have those which is great and you'll see here I'm just trying to save time by basically creating a block of flowers and then just copy and pasting it over and change them around so they don't look too um, too copied. And this is certainly a good technique to save time but still have that realism in mind. And you'll see here I'm just sort of tidying up the areas and edges as well for adding in a few extra flowers to sort of follow the, the curves themselves. Um, and it's just a nice way, it's not something that you commonly get to do in builds, it's not very often that I um, get my green fingers out so to speak and uh, go happy with the flowers um, if anything you're gonna typically add the odd tree or odd flower or bush into a detailed garden so it's nice to have something like this to build and really let your creativity flow with flower arrangements and things like that so I'd really highly advise you guys if you're stuck for something to build in your next um, next project Try and build some sort of a beautiful stately home, large mansion or something or you know a communal area and add some nice flowers in there and uh, really go out on it as well. It is a relaxing, <laughs> relaxing build I must say, it was really, really fun to do. Now the Osborne House also is or has another little courtyardy house location very much next door to it as well which is this part here. Now. There wasn't the exact building on the workshop to use, so we're going with these sort of French looking buildings. I know we probably should have gone for more of an Italian <laughs> type based on the, the Osborne House's history of its architecture, but these were as close as I could find um, within the scale, within the colours and the design to um, to accompany the Osborne House. So. We, we had a bit of fun trying to get these down and making them look correct because like I say the scale had to be right um, and I did sort of use move it to double the uh, thickness of certain parts of the buildings but I think it worked okay in the end. I mean the focal point of this area is obviously the um, Osborne house and you'll also see I'm throwing in a Monaco building as well because believe it or not that building there looks pretty much identical to these here so I had to do it via procedure objects so I could lower down into the ground if I didn't it would have been too high and look a bit silly so that was um, something I had to do there and that leads us to nearer the end of the episode now um, all that is left for us to do now is the beautiful gardens sorting out some of the road networks and placing down all the trees and foliage that surround this beautiful area and I wanted to try and copy and imitate the tree lines as best I could because looking at some of the images I saw on the internet, some of the, uh, the video footage that other people have taken, wow, some of these screenshots that they were getting throughout the trees and with the trees in the background really, really did look incredible. And I really want to try and imitate that in the cinematics. And I know I've said it already, but please do stick by for the cinematics because they are probably, probably some of my best, I would say. <laughs> um, as of late anyway the, uh, the the look that I've managed to achieve with the cinematics really does 
make this beautiful building in this area really pop out nicely so stick around for those um, so yeah that's pretty much it we're just going to detail these minor parts now with some of these extra trees and trying to stick to a combination of trees that the island is already using um, and just adding a few little trees here and there one thing that I would probably say I have a, an issue with sometimes is laying down trees um, and I've been using quite a lot of the time now just references from Google Maps etc to try and make the tree lines look realistic um, sometimes in my head when I lay down the trees they don't really look like what I think they should do uh, whereas you may look at it and think oh that looks nice it's just one of those um, internal things that you think of when you're building it's natural really isn't it um, but I'm gonna leave you now um, the final cinematics will be coming up very shortly um, as I said please do check out the um, asset on the workshop because it's absolutely incredible um, and please do also follow me and like the video if you did enjoy it subscribe to the channel for more videos Monaco will be the next video you see on the channel. That will probably be next week. Um, other than that, guys, please do feel free to comment your thoughts and opinions and what you'd like to see next and anything else you want to do. Jump into the Discord, check out the Twitter. You know what to do. You know who I am. Um, but, yeah, thank you anyway all for your time. Hope you had a great weekend, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, and all the best.